the record button now? I think, yep, this program has been recorded. Okay, so um, we are gathered here today to remember a dear friend, Bill Fagley, um, who in, in no uncommon word was a giant that treaded this path. Um, suddenly he took a swim on Monday and um, it is my wish that we will, through this conversation, try to remember him as a friend, a colleague, and a human being. Um, in order not to waste our time for this morning um, event, I am gonna start by, um, by introduction. Um, so I'll start for myself. My name is Ndebisi Ezenumba. I am the Francois Billion Richard Security of African Art here at the New Orleans Museum of Art. I succeeded Bill Fegley from this position. Um, so that is me. Um, in no particular order, somebody else can take up that introduction. I'll go. I'm Rosalind Walker, uh, the senior curator at the Dallas Museum of Art. And, in charge of the arts of Africa, the Americas and the Pacific, and then Ma Margaret McDermott, curator of African art. I, um, I met Bill in 1966. He was, uh, I guess, on his way out of Indiana U to go to New Orleans when I was getting started. And um, I think I was never really out of in touch with him all those decades. I just really enjoy being with him. I uh, always, most of the time, saw him when I was in New Orleans. And one of the things I appreciate him beyond, you know, what we all appreciate about him is my cousin Laverne, who passed away in December in New Orleans, adored him. I and mean, he always included her in our get togethers. And I think that was really sweet of him. So um, you will be missed. You will be missed. Thank you very much. Um, the, the, I guess I would be next. Yeah, um, uh, each, each introduction should be like, you know, very short because we're actually gonna discuss him after this um, section. Okay, I arrived at Indiana in 1967. And the first I heard of Bill was when Sophie Sieber said, Oh, you're from Louisiana. You need to know Bill. He'll never leave New Orleans. He loves it. And so Sieber gave me this old clunky typewriter for my next trip home to deliver to the Delgado Museum uh, to the curator of African art there. So that's how I met Bill. By the way, I'm retired professor of African art history at University of Florida. Thank you. Sally, you're next. Okay. Um, ever since uh, I met Norma Wolf at Indiana, I decided I was giving up my kid named Sally and starting to be Sarah. And so I'm Sarah Hollis. I teach um, in the museum studies program at Southern University at New Orleans. I teach mainly courses that have to do with African art and culture, including the art of the African diaspora. And um, I've been there all these years. I was head of the art department for a while because nobody else wanted to have to write all those reports. <laughs> and then I was dean of the graduate school for a while because we needed to be more uh, diverse in the, in the administration. And then, um, uh, I it was um, in charge of the museum studies program off and on for years, but I'm so happy to have a director now who's half my age and has lots of energy and has been publishing a lot. And um, I think the program's in good hands and I'm happy to just be teaching. And I uh, take care of the projects because we really require a major project at the end of the program. And then he teaches the uh, course in the uh, thesis. And then I also supervise the interns. And Dr. Um, Ezalima has been very sweet to work with interns that want to work at NOMA. 
And then he teaches classes with us. So we're really happy about that. That's me. Dr. Susan. I'm Susan Cooksey, and I have recently retired from working 20 years at the Harn Museum of Art uh, at the University of Florida as their African curator. And I had the privilege of knowing Bill and the joy of knowing Bill better, uh, you know, not, not as casually since 2006. And we worked together on numerous, numerous exhibitions and ideas and uh, it was just a joy to know him. Carly? Hi, I'm Carly Forbes. I'm the Mellon Curatorial Fellow at the Fowler Museum. Um, I know Bill from uh, the time when I was a master's student at the University of Florida, working with Robin and Susan and Rebecca on Congo Across the Waters. Thank you. Erica, are you still there? I am. Sorry, I was <laughs> Again, my name is <laughs> my name is Erica Whip. I am um, the keeper of the African Art Collections at Southern University of New Orleans, as well as the Interim Circulation Librarian. Hopefully, I'll be going for a new title change soon. Um, as well as the Adjunct Professor of uh, Principles of Museology for um, undergrads at SUNO, and I'm also a full-time doctoral student at um, Louisiana State University. Um, working on a doctorate degree in um, cultural preservation for the Doctor of Design program. And um, I should mention at first, my thesis was on, um, uh, what was it? Traditional African art in New Orleans and tracing the history of it, which um, thanks to Dr. Um, Ezzy Lumba and Dr. Hollis, I was able to um, forge a better connection um, with Bill through an interview and, um, once he learned what I was about and who I was and what I wanted to write about, um, we finally began to foster a, a wonderful connection. And again, we were supposed to um, meet, uh, Dr. Ezilumba and I were supposed to meet Bill at his house to have a conversation as well as to tour his um, art, his personal collection at his house. But um, yeah, that's, that's, and I'm a, again, a, a, a student of Dr. Hollis and now a grandchild of Dr. Sieber. <laughs> Thank you so very much. Um, in the fall, in the fall of 2018, when I when I relocated from Virginia to New Orleans, um, I have heard a lot about um, Bill Fagley, and I came um, waiting for the opportunity to go out to meet him. Then one of those days, while I was in the office, a loud cracking laugh came up, came just came by the office, and and someone said, "That is Bill Fagley in the museum." <laughs> and truly, he was quite an exciting human being. He came straight, he came in and, and asked them, where's the new African guy? So I came out and we met and we just um, became friends. He's, he took me out in his hands and took me to New Orleans and showed me all New Orleans. And at some point he stopped and asked me, are you a foodie like myself? And I said, oh yes. And he took me straight to Dookie Chase and took me to Mrs. Dookie, um, a, a, you know, Mrs. Leah Chase, and um, we, we, we had a fine conversation. After that, Bill has always come by the museum, stopped by, and we have conversations. We talk about plans. Some, some of the classes I taught in the museum, Bill has also been called in. Uh, and he has also driven across that lake more than once to come and see me and my family. So this kind of summarized um, the, the you know, person that I saw Bill to be. You know, um, kind of really selfless coming out and, um, you know, he, everything I have in this office, I have actually taken some out, but he left everything intact um, before I came. And then last week, Thursday, he called me again in his usual tradition. Um, Andy, I am cleaning out my house and I have this stack of, you know, tribal art magazine that I don't think I'm going to be needing anymore. Um, do you have a need for that? And I said, oh, yes, that um, I have a stack that, you know, Jonah Bajan had already brought to me um, some months ago that, yes, I, I need as much as, as I can get. So he said, okay, give me a minute. Let me get my, my, my house cleared out and I'll call you back for, for us to arrange on when you come pick it up or I'll bring it to the museum. And that never happened. So um, going forward, I'll, 
I, I have like three or four questions set out. So it, it, we are not gonna take it in any particular order, but, but you know, I'll just throw them out there and anybody that feel like you know, talking should just take it on. Um, my, my questions are this, what is your association with Bill Fegley and how did you meet or work together or collaborate? That's the first question. Yes, Dr. Susan. Yeah. Um, first of all, I'd like to say I, I met him early on when I first came uh, to New Orleans. Uh, one of the ways I met him was I would go down to the library at NOMA to look for books about African art. And they, the librarian would say, oh, Bill Fegley has had in his office. <laughs> so he had, I think, the entire library from uh, NOMA uh, on the shelves in his office. But he was always happy, you know, let me come in and, and look at the books. But when I first met him, I have to tell you, the my earliest memory, I think, is when he had, it was in a small room, and it was like the size of maybe two or three king size beds. And it was a raised wooden uh, platform and it had rocks and things on it. And it had uh, a number of pieces of African art. And that was the entire collection at that point. That must have been early 70s. And I was so fascinated to see how he built the collection pieces at a time and they gave him more space and then more space. Uh, at first, I think he was trying to figure out how much did I know about African art and was I somebody that was really serious? And it seemed to take him a little while. And then he decided, yes, she seems to be serious. And so he helped me so much with my teaching because I always taught an African art class and later African humanities where we also um, had a class that expanded out to literature and music as well as art. Uh, they were two separate classes. And then he would take my students through the museum. So I would meet great groups of maybe 30 or 40 students at NOMA. And he would tour us through the collection and talk to the students. Uh, he would assign me to give lectures in the auditorium about different aspects of African art as things came up. Um, I really owe him a lot in terms of my career in teaching. And he was always extremely kind to our students. The only thing we ever argued about was I always felt like he should do something with contemporary African art and artists. And he's, he felt like it was important for his position to deal with the historic African art. So that was one little thing I nagged him about. But he was a wonderful person. And when we started getting our art, he came out uh, on different occasions and the Davises were very important. And of course, Dr. Bertrand, who gave us probably by now about 1500 pieces of art uh, and, and helped us meet other donors. Uh, but Bill Fagley was a wonderful person. His house was absolutely fascinating. It was like entering another world. The only person I can think about whose heart, whose house, and some of you may have visited it, that reminded me that was uh, Chief Ovia Ida in Benin City who also had a house that was very similar to that with modern work and historical work uh, and the personality to go with it all. But while I think of Bill Fagley as the person who opened up uh, African art for people that came to the museum, he also had a tremendous interest in self-taught artists and folk artists and also contemporary artists. Uh, and he rose to be the assistant director of the museum under John Bullard, who we all miss too. He's still with us living, but he moved to Maine for part of the year. But he was very warm and welcoming to everybody. And he worked very closely with Bill Fagley. So I have wonderful memories of Bill Fagley. I hope that helps. I'll maybe go next. Um, my my recollections are short but sweet um, in that a real highlight uh, working with Congo Across the Waters. I mean, I look at it now and I was literally only a master's student um, and the amount of responsibility that Robin, Susan and Rebecca gave me was pretty incredible. But then even also including me in the travel of the exhibition and getting to meet curators who then like Bill, like encouraged the growth of my career and answered questions that I had and never made me feel dumb or 
you know, belittled or only a master's student, but I was a colleague and a contributor. Um, and I think that really contributed a lot to building my self-confidence as I've continued to grow in my career. And it's because of the kindness and willingness to share that people like Bill have expressed and been very collegial and supportive throughout this whole thing that has helped get me to where I am today in my still growing budding career. Ross? Well, as I said, I'm not here. About 1965, I began graduate school. Uh, Bill was working at the, um, the art museum. And I think he was registrar there. You're, I can't hear you. You can't hear me. No, you're fading in and out. So you need to oh, get okay. closer, I think, or. Yeah, and I'm probably stop moving. So, <laughs> so he was working at the museum at the time. And, uh, and then, I don't know if he went off in the fall. He, he seemed to always be there, but he wasn't there because he was in New Orleans. I guess that is the, you know, the power of his uh, personality and presence. But anyway, over the years, we always stayed in touch. Uh, and he was very kind to invite me to come down to, to uh, give a lecture in uh, New Orleans. Uh, what was that? Was that after he had reinstalled? I forget. Uh, again, I forget a lot of things. But it was a great visit and always was really good to see him. Uh, when I did the, um, the African Art of the Skies, a mask exhibition here, he helped me uh, make some loans. I guess the only beef I have is that, is that the Chihuahuas, the bi bi billion, billion, is that the way you pronounce it? Um, there are a pair of a Chihuahuas in the collection that I hope would you know, maybe go somewhere else and they didn't come here. <laughs> He was very protective of his uh, of his his donors and patrons, so I didn't get to poach. But anyway, uh, I have really good memories of him, and just uh, you know, life's so short; you just never know what's around the corner. It's just totally shocking that he isn't here. Okay, I'll go next. As I said before, my first uh, meeting with him was the Siebers gave me this clunky old typewriter to take to New Orleans to give to this person they knew. So that was my first meeting with Bill. Uh, then later, um, I was going to be home for a break of some sort and he got in touch and said that he had uh, this new collection had been given to the museum and I needed to come down and see it. And it turned out to be the Victor Kayam collection. So he was able to tell me all about the ins and outs of that story, which are fascinating. Uh, so anyway, I got to see the Victor Kayam stuff in, in the storerooms. And then I was down there with my mother and her friend one time and, um, the King Tut show was on. So we wanted to see the King Tut show, but we didn't know that we wanted to stay in line for three blocks or so to get into it. So he escorted us to the front of the line and put us in for free. Um, then the next time I had something, he had this program where he wanted to talk about African art from the point of view of a scholar, a collector and a dealer. And so he invited me to be the scholar. At the time, I didn't think I was a scholar, but I guess I am. Uh, Helen Kuhn from Los Angeles was a collector. Uh, and I think her collection went to Sotheby's uh, rather than to the New Orleans Museum or Dallas or wherever. Uh, and then the dealer was, um, uh, Kent, not Kent. Uh, Charlie. Charlie we, Davis. Charlie Davis, yeah. Uh, so that was a fascinating time. And for that one, uh, he invited me to stay in his guest house, which is on the other side of the uh, 
the courtyard from his house. I guess at one time it was probably a carriage house or something like that. And then of course, um, I think Rebecca was able to talk him into taking Congo across the waters and uh, Susan and Carly and Payne and I all have fond memories of all of the leads and connections that he made for us in New Orleans because we wanted to feature New Orleans as one of the sites of, of Congo heritage. And so he got us in touch with Freddie Evans, mm -hmm. uh, with, um, oh gosh, she just died, Dama's, Dama Fountain's husband, uh, the filmmaker. Mm -hmm. Royce Osborne. Yes. Oh, oh Royce, yeah. Royce. yeah. And uh, he made all these connections for us and took us to all of these different food places and so on uh, and just treated us like uh, royalty while we were there. So uh, those were the little tie-ins that, that I've had with Bill across the years. So and that was fantastic. I'm curious about how he got the Akayam uh, collection. Oh, well, actually, if you'll Google it, uh, Google uh, his retirement thing, and he, he talks about meeting with Kayam, and Kayam asked him who he studied with, and he said, Roy Stevery, he's an awful person, or something <laughs> like that. Uh, <laughs> Kayam kept asking about sort of testing him about what he knew. And then I think Bullard went to New York and visited with Kayam. Uh, and, and they were going to divide the collection, the modern going one place and the African going to New Orleans. But in the end, I mean, he, he died suddenly and they didn't know anything, but it turns out that he had done everything to uh, New Orleans. But then, I don't know, we're being recorded. Maybe I shouldn't be saying all this. <laughs> <laughs> But, but as I understand it from what Bill told me is that uh, I am son then challenged it. And I think he wanted the moderns, the Matisses, the, you know, the French moderns and so on. So New Orleans got the, uh, the African uh, materials. And from what Bill said, it was the proceeds that he Kayem then got from the modern that he was able to buy the Remington Razor Company. You know, he used to have these advertisements that my name is Victor Kayem. Right. And I Remington Razor so much that I bought the company. Yeah. Uh, well, it was because of the collection. I it's what Bill said uh, that that he was able to buy the company. Mm. Wow. Now, how much of that is embroidery? <laughs> it's a good story. And he did say that the New New York museums were shocked that he left, that he gave the work to New Orleans and not to the museums in New York. And and I think he, he also says that Mr. Kayam uh, either was born in New Orleans or, you know, kind of um, grew up here. So, so, you know, he was he was kind of looking back um, how how to give back to New Orleans as well. So you know there were you know there was all these kinds of connections going on um, at that time. Dr. Susan. Well, I talked to Bill a lot before I actually met him in person at the museum, and we worked. He he called me, and I can't remember the timeline, but I was invited to do uh, an essay for Resonance from the Past which is about the collection. And then again, Ancestors of Congo Square. So I wrote about a Burkina Faso mask that I had seen uh, you know, in the area where I worked and learned about it there. So that was a real honor to be invited to contribute to that. But when I did see Bill in the museum for the first time and see the collection in storage, and, and of course I, I had seen it in the museum, but I went down to storage with him several months after Katrina and he showed me the cracks in the floor and I just nearly cried. And when he told me the story of, 
you know, going through Katrina and the museum, and I know the Harn where I worked, um, took up contributions to um, send to Noma, and it was just very touching to actually see those cracks in the floor. And but the museum was his home in many ways, and uh, and I think that one of the coolest things I remember about Bill was uh, after we worked on Congo Across the Waters and it was being hosted at the museum, we were invited to speak. And so Robin and I were going to be speaking <coughs> there one afternoon. And I had to fly that day from Gainesville, Florida. I started out, the, the plane broke down, they couldn't, they couldn't take off. So they put us in taxis. Well, the taxi got a flat tire halfway to Tampa where I was going to fly from. I got I got another taxi and we barely made it uh, to Tampa on time. And I had to fly to Memphis, I think, before I got to New Orleans. And I barely skidded into the talk on time, I think it started at uh, 5.30 and it was already 5.35 and Robin was already there and the participants and the audience were already there. And I thought, oh, this is terrible. And I rushed, uh, you know, I rushed into the, the museum grounds and there, who did I see on that magnificent stairwell leading up to the door of the museum with a, a drink in his hand? <laughs> Bill. And he said, you know, just like it was a, a party at his palatial home or something. And we went upstairs and then rushed into the, and just, you know, got up on the stage and just continued the conversation. And it was very rattled and, uh, but he made you feel so good about just being there. And it was just a wonderful experience all, and so exhilarating. And he just made everyone feel so so good and so comfortable and had so much in his in his head too. He was such a humble person. Um, so I respected him in, in so many ways. And I also adored his, I adored the collection, which is one of the most beautiful collections of African art, of course, that we have here in this country. But I loved his home, which is a kind of museum, you know, and a museum where you live among the, the objects and it's an art environment in every respect. So I would make excuses to come visit him at his house, which I'm sure were very transparent. And, uh, <laughs> oh, I'm working on an exhibition of self-taught artists. Can I see your collection? Can we talk about it? So that, that happened about three or four times. And it was always very enjoyable to, to be with him and just learn so much from him. Uh, every kind of art you can imagine was in that house. Mm -hmm. And of course I loved his cats because I'm a cat person and there were always cats in attendance that he absolutely adored. So we had, we had many connections, but of course the biggest thing was working with Congo across the waters with him and seeing that show realized um, and reinterpreted in some ways by the addition of African-American artwork in Noma and it was so exciting and wonderful and one of the highlights of my life, really. I made sure that my students <clears throat> came to that and everybody I knew, I told about it. I thought that was an extremely, extremely important show for Noma to have. I loved it. And somebody told me that they were going to do a follow up and do New Orleans. That may have been Bill that said that. So I don't know. Are there any plans? <laughs> That would be great. It would be fabulous. Um, I, I don't I don't know that that, that uh, they, they said, but but I actually thought that the the last um, uh, the last um, installation that he, that he did in the museum, which actually uh, morphed into that book, Congo um, Ancestors of the Congo Square. I think mm -hmm. that may be the idea that he was trying to explore uh, post mm -hmm. um, Congo Across the Water. Could have been, yeah. And that book, I every time I teach the African art class or the African diaspora class, I ask my students to buy a copy of that so that when they go through and see the art at Noma, they can read about it. And the bookstore has been very generous to sell it to them for $50 instead of the 75. And that's selling online 
for like hundreds of dollars, but it's still available in the bookstore at Noma. So I don't understand the book market, but I don't love either. what he did with that book. It's extremely important. Erica? Um, I first met Bill when um, I think it was my first year of grad school. So uh, 2013. And um, I remember going to the museum and just pretty much being starstruck by the exhibit. And Dr. Hollis would always say, uh, yeah, find your face in, you know, in the pieces. And, you know, maybe this could be an ancestor. It felt really, it made me feel closer to, to the artwork. But um, I remember trying to meet Bill on several occasions and trying to get his attention, but he would always have his mind and things elsewhere. And so I remember, you know, asking Dr. Hollis, like, how can I get his attention? I would totally like to intern with him. Oh, my God. You know, just a mess. Um, but no, Dr. Hollis was just like, yeah, he has this project going on and that project going on. So, you know, when that happened, it'll happen. Um, and finally, uh, what, last year? Um, after speaking with Dr. Ezzy Loom, because of course I've, I've ran into Bill a few times and know that an infectious laugh from anywhere. Um, I was speaking to Dr. Ezzy Loom, but I was just like, you know what? I'm working on my thesis. This is it. Uh, could you help me sit him down <laughs> so I can have a conversation with him? And um, uh, Indy was just like, yeah, that's fine. Uh, yeah, I'll totally be on the call with you for your interview and Oh my gosh, it was so perfect. It was it was great, and he spoke to me like we were friends for years. And um, he was um, I don't want to say enchanted, but I think he was happy to know that um, a student was willing to help push uh, the love of traditional African art not only to New Orleans, but um, you know nationally, especially to. Um, African-American populations that may not know about traditional African art, which is what I would really like to do. Um, and so, yeah, we, we had a great interview. It turned into a wonderful conversation and follow-ups. And he made sure to send me um, his book and uh, to help make it available, well, for me to have my own personal copy, but to also make it available um, in the library. And yeah, again, we were supposed to... Um, after COVID, go over to his house, see the collection, all the things he was telling me about, and um, be able to see some of the books. Um, and, you know, it's for Indy and I to just have a wonderful conversation in his house, especially after um, I did some research on uh, an interview that he gave, and uh, it had, like, little snippets from his house and things. All of us great. Is that the one on Etsy? I'm sorry? Is that the one on Etsy? Yes, that's it. That's oh, okay. it. Um, huh. The pictures were beautiful, and they actually helped for one of the papers that I was writing too. But um, yeah, I'm a, I'm sad that we won't have that opportunity. Um, but I'm sure his energy is here, there, and everywhere, and doing whatever it is that he wants to do out in in his new form as an ancestor. So um, I am hoping to. Con I'm I'm thankful to have gotten that interview and to build that connection. And um, I hope to continue it and to meet as many people as I can to um, to help bringing people together towards African art. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, I, I once asked Bill, um, Bill, what do you think is your, is your most, uh, what, what, what do you think is, um, is, your, is your most achievement? In, in you know in your career being a curator here at New Orleans Museum of Art, this this question I think popped up in 2019 when uh, we we had one of you know one of those are such meetings and what he told me was was that well I feel accomplished because um, I set out to uh, one of my, my my jobs was to build the African art collection here at Noma and I succeeded in doing that um, then even though he declared that with all with all confidence. Um, he, he left a very little caveat at the end. He's, he, um, he says that the only regret I have is that um, I wasn't able to push it more to maybe the African-American community as I would have wanted that to be. Um, so, you know, in your, in your individual way, what do you think Bill's legacy is? 
Can I answer that first? Um, I would say that he actually succeeded, um, especially with being able to um, build connections with SUNO, which is historically black college and university, having Dr. Hollis um, as a friend to be able to help disseminate information to make sure um, students got to NOMA. Um, and I would like to think that I, I would be an example of um, what he did and the goal that he set out to achieve because I do want to be able to continue to push that forward. Um, and so, you know, I'm sad to, I think after in our interview, we talked about that too. Um, I think, well, I hope that he can rest well knowing that he was able to, it may not have been on a, on a wide scale, but he was able to accomplish um, being able to spread traditional African art to the African, uh, African American community especially in New Orleans, and it will continue that way, so. And whenever uh, he would redo the Africa, as, as over the years it evolved, uh, how sophisticated the setting for the African art was, he would call me up and say, I have some showcases that we're through with, we're putting in new showcases, would you like to have them? And so, you know, I always said yes, and it's certainly upgraded what we had to show our um, African art collection in. And I'm sorry to say a lot of those huge, beautiful showcases uh, were ruined in the Hurricane Katrina, but it's a wonderful memory that he cared about us. And all, you know, it's like they always say, one person's trash is another person's treasure. Well, Noma trash was very nice. <laughs> and it was certainly a treasure for us to inherit and to continue what we were doing. And he, he did a lot of that and turned out for things we did. And we certainly turned out for the um, occasions that he did. And that it's interesting that, you know, usually, an exhibition is planned and then the book is written or the catalog is written. But he did that catalog of Noma's collection before the exhibition was planned, the Ancestors of Congo Square. And when uh, Miss Taylor came in as the director, she said, well, if you're publishing the book, why don't we do an exhibition? So that was something positive that she did in coming into the museum. And uh, he asked me to do a walkthrough and I was stunned to see like several hundred people following me around. I didn't even have a microphone, but uh, I approached it. I thought, well, how can I approach this differently than the other lectures? And I thought, do it from the point of view of the how you display African art. So I talked about the research, you know, that wonderful, what is it, an MRI or something of the ceramic piece that showed there were beheaded pregnant women inside of this piece. And then I talked about the big um, uh, photographs that were blown up to show how pieces were used. Uh, and then videos that showed, you know, uh, masquerades being danced. And so I felt like it was really important. And of course, having a being in a museum studies program to talk about it from that angle. And it seemed to have been appreciated. But he, he helped us so much at SUNO, and I just am heartbroken, first of all, to lose somebody that meant so much to all of us, but also we're going to be opening our museum probably in the fall with all that art that he helped us with, and he won't be here, but I know he'll be here in spirit, and I know he'll be meeting with Farrah Carnet and Mr. Hino and all the people that have gone before that helped us with our collection and the people, like you said, Kiam, who helped with his collection. And so he's going to have a lot of friends up there, whatever, wherever our spirit resides. But I'm going to miss him terribly. And we're all going to miss his laugh. Everybody talks about that. Even if he was three or four or five, <laughs> you know, always knew when he got to a party because of that laugh. Bill, we're going to miss you. Yeah, truly, he will be truly missed. Um, I, I know, al although he, he, he made that statement that, you know, um, he think one of the things he truly did not um, achieve was, you know, getting the art out to, to you know, far-flung communities. I, I think, in a, a, you know, in a way, what, what, that, um, what, what that told me was that there is work to be done. 
and um, mm -hmm. he probably has walked up to the point where um, um, you know he he has to leave it for you know um, for 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 the for the um, next generation to continue. Um, it is it is going to be a very um, tough job because when they leave the big shoes for you know um, the upcoming generation to take over, it is always a big um, a, a huge responsibility. Um, so you know the the remainder of that exhibition, Congo across uh, ancestors of the Congo Square, um, will be traveling to um, to the Frist Museum in Tennessee uh, next fall, oh, okay. Oh, okay. and and that is that is the that is the placeholder for the gallery um, here at Noma um, for when I begin the the work of you know reinstalling the African art collection. But you know, in 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 all sincerity, I think um, Bill truly um, worked very hard to like you know build one of the most outstanding African art collections in the country, and I believe in a way um, in the world. Thank you all so so much for you know um, taking this time out to you know come and you know sit and reflect on um, uh, our friends' um, life and work. Um, I will send any messages as they come, uh, as things are planned um, with his um, funeral. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much for holding this today. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a good Bye. rest of your day. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.